right, so next up we have uh, David Roscoe and Stefan Schriegen. They will be performing the second half of Edward Albee's short play, Zoo Story. Uh, because this is the second half of the play, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a background. Uh, essentially, this case represents a park bench in Central Park in New York City. We could not actually find a Central Park park bench, so in the case it's dead. Uh, David, uh, David's character Peter has been reading on the bench at the opening of the play. Stefan's character Jerry comes in somewhat disheveled and distraught, telling him about uh, having just been to the zoo and then proceeds to uh, harass Peter for the better part of 10 minutes um, and kind of talking a little bit crazy. Uh, so that's pretty much all you need to know. So, Stefan and David. <laughs> now I'll let you in on what happened at the zoo. But first, I should tell you why I went to the zoo. I went to the zoo to find out more about the way people exist with animals. And the way that animals exist with each other. But, but I guess it wasn't fair. What with everyone separated by bars from everyone else, the, the animals for the most part from each other, and always the people from the animals. But if it's a zoo, then, then that's the way it is. I'm sorry, have you enough room? Well, all the animals are there, and all the people are there, and it's Sunday, so all the children are there. Move on. All right. Hot, so all the stench is there too. And all the balloon sellers are there, and all the ice cream sellers, and the seals are barking, and the birds are screaming. Move over! Look here, you have more than enough room. And I'm there, and it's feeding time at the lion's house, and the lion keeper comes into the lion cage to feed one of the lions. Move over! <laughs> I can't move over anymore. Stop hitting me. What's the matter with you? Don't you want to hear the rest of the story? I'm not so sure, I certainly don't want to be hit. Like that? Stop it, what is the matter with you? I'm crazy, you bastard. That isn't funny. Listen to me, Peter. I want this bench. You go sit on the bench over there, and if you're good, maybe I'll tell you the rest of the story. But whatever for, what is the matter with you? Besides, I see no reason why I should have to give up this bench. I come here every Sunday afternoon in good weather. It's secluded here. There's never anyone sitting here, so I have it all to myself. Get off this bench, Peter. I want it. No. I said I want it, and I'm going to have it. Now get over there. People can't have everything they want. You should know that. It's a rule. People can have some of the things they want, but they can't have everything. Imbecile, you're slow with it. Stop that. You're a vegetable. <laughs> Go lie down on the ground. Now you listen to me. I've put up with you all afternoon. Not really. Long enough. i put up with you long enough. I've listened to you because you seemed... Well, I thought you wanted to talk to somebody. You put things, well, economically, and all. What's the word I want to do justice to here? Jesus, you make me sick! Get off here and give me my bench! My bench! Get out of my sight! God damn you, that's enough. I had enough of you. I'm not giving up this bench. You can't have it, and that's that. Now go away. Go away, I said. Get out of here. If you don't move on, you're a bum. That's who you are. If you don't move on, I'll call a policeman. He'll make you move. I warn you, I'll call a policeman. You won't find any policemen out here. They're all over on the west side, chasing fairies down from the trees and out of the bushes. That's their function. That's all they do. So go ahead. Scream your head out. It won't do you any good. Police! I warn you, I'll have you arrested. Police! I said, police! I feel ridiculous. You look ridiculous. A grown man, screaming his head off on a bright Sunday afternoon. Nobody so much as heard it. The policeman wants to come over here, he'll scold it, he'd take you in as a nut. Great God, I just came here to read, and now you want me to give up this bench, you're mad. <laughs> hey, I got news for you. I'm on your precious bench. You're never gonna have it to yourself. Again! Look, you get off my bench. I don't care if it makes any sense or not. I want this bench for myself and I want you off it! Ah, uh, look who's mad. Stop that. No. I warn you. <laughs> Do you know how ridiculous you look now? It doesn't matter. Get away from my bench! What? You have everything in the world and now you want this bench. Peter, is this iron? This wood? Is this the only thing in the world you want to fight for? Can you think of anything more absurd? Absurd? Look, I'm not going to talk to you about honor or even try to explain it to you. Besides, it's not a question of honor. 
And even if it were, you wouldn't understand. Do you know what you're saying? This is probably the most trying thing you have to do since changing your cat's litter box, stupid! Do you have any idea what that Oh boy, listen to you. Well, you don't need this bench. Yes! Yes, I do! I've come here for years. I've had hours of great pleasure, great satisfaction, right here. That's important to a man. I'm a responsible person. I'm a grown-up. This is my bench, and you have no right to take it away from me. Push your bench, Peter, then. Defend your bench! You've pushed me to a death and fight. Like a man? Yes, like a man, if you insist on walking me further. I'll have to give you credit for one thing, Peter. You are a vegetable, and a slightly near side one, too, I think. That's enough. But you know, Peter, as I say on TV all the time, I don't really mean this. You have a certain quality about you, a certain dignity. It surprises me. Stop! Very well, Peter. We'll fight. But we're not evenly matched. You are mad. You're stark raving mad. You're going to kill me. Pick it up. You'll have a knife. And we'll be evenly matched. No. Now you pick up that knife and you fight with me. You fight for your honor. You fight for that goddamn bench. Stop. Let go of me. Help. You fight, you miserable bastard. You fight for your manhood. You fight for your bench. You pathetic. Little vegetable! I'll give you one last chance. Get out of here and leave me alone. Sophie. So our last scene of the day is uh, Jessica DeLacy and Austin Brown. They're going to be performing in its entirety the play Sure Things by David Ives, and the setting is uh, an outdoor cafe in New York City. So, Julia Campbell, we are fully.